comfortable home to live in and a secure income. We want to see our children go to school, graduate. We want to let them be empowered and be able to provide them a financially stable future. Whether we are there to see it through or not, it is still our responsibility to make that dream come true. IIC offers a series of life assurance plans at competitive prices with the objective to provide security for you and your loved ones. We offer group life policy, comfort five assurance, individual term assurance, secure loan plans, house purchase plans, and children's educational plans. IIC life assurance plans, a better life guaranteed. IIC International Insurance Company, the insurers you can trust. Well, to news from outside the Gambia now, voters in Russia are gearing up to head the polls to pick a new president. The election happens this Sunday, and whoever wins will serve a six-year term. But if no candidate receives more than 50% of the vote, then the, two, then the top two vote-getters will face each other in a runoff three weeks later. The man widely expected to win is the current Prime Minister and former President Vladimir Putin. His nearest rival is Gennady Zaganov from the Communist Party who was standing for the fourth time. CNN's Phil Black is following, is following the Russian elections and this is his report. ...to the Soviet Union. The Communist Party has been a constant political force. Uh, in Russia and its leader Gennady Zyuganov is a persistent presidential candidate as you say he's now making his fourth run for the job he is a long way behind according to the opinion polls but he still remains the closest competitor to that likely winner the current Prime Minister Vladimir Putin these young people are not cheering for a sports team they're passionately screaming for this man the Communist Party's presidential candidate, Gennady Zyuganov. Before a crowd of true believers, he speaks of the Soviet Union's former greatness. That empire and its ideology collapsed 20 years ago. But Russia's Communist Party still reveres Lenin, the man responsible for it. Zyuganov is rarely far from Lenin's image. Here he lays flowers at Lenin's mausoleum to honor what would have been the revolutionary leader's 140th birthday. But when we meet Zyuganov, he insists today's communism is very different to Soviet communism. He says under the USSR, it was a system of state control. Now it's a modern left-wing political party. Zyuganov says the communists are for democracy and political competition. He says he wants a coalition government. He believes in an economy that is pro-business, but he also wants government control of big industries like agriculture, oil and banking. His message appeals to those who fondly remember the USSR. This woman says Zyuganov will revive Russia. He's been criticized for not modernizing and attracting more young people. But there are young faces in the crowd. This man believes the number of young communists is growing because more people want social equality. There are bloody chapters in Russia's communist history. But that red flag with the hammer and sickle is still a powerful brand. The party has remained the second most popular political force in the country. But that also means Yuganov, now 67, is a serial presidential wannabe. Back in 1996, when he had moves like a younger man, Zyuganov ran strongly but unsuccessfully against Boris Yeltsin. In 2000, he ran against Vladimir Putin and lost. In 2008, his loss to Dmitry Medvedev was spectacular. And polling suggests he won't get close to beating Putin this time. So this soon-to-be four-time presidential election loser is the closest electoral alternative to Vladimir Putin. It is another reason why a growing number of Russians believe their vote just doesn't count. Zyuganov never joined the recent crowds of anti-Putin protesters demanding political reforms and fair elections, but he says he supports them and has even suggested some of their leaders could serve in a communist government. That would be very different to Russia's last experience with communist rule. It's just not likely to happen. From Russia to Syria, the UN Arab League envoy Syria Kofi Annan has set his agenda on bringing to an end months of sickening bloodshed in the country. 
The former UN Secretary General has called for an immediate cessation of all violence and the opening of all humanitarian channels for aid agencies to reach desperate civilians. Meanwhile, the heavy pounding of the opposition stronghold of the Babu Amir district of Homs by Syrian government forces is mounting. We have details in this report. A week after Kofi Annan was appointed the United Nations International Envoy to Syria, he says he hopes to visit Damascus with a clear message. The violence must stop and humanitarian aid agencies must have access to the population. There's a need for dialogue between all actors uh, in, in, in Syria. And uh, that is what we would want to try and push as soon as possible. This appears unlikely in light of events in Syria. Syrian forces have forced the resistance out of the Baba Amar district of Homs. The cities of Hama and Deir are still under Syrian army attack. As the Syrian army continues to punish civilians in Syria's besieged cities, Rebel army forces from the Free Syrian Army continue to resist and recruit deserters from the regular army. Defections are lethal to the army because when an officer or soldier defects, the morale of the entire group drops to zero. There was fear before, but now it's gone. Defecting officers and soldiers feared for their families, their children, but now the situation has become very clear. The army is deployed all over Syria, using the same tanks to shell and to kill. Any soldier or official who expresses their doubts are killed. I was with the forces that entered Chiselari on the first day. I defected eight months later. I saw what happened from the first day to the last. When we entered the city, there was not one soul left alive. Thursday, the president of the opposition Syrian National Council announced a bureau would bring armed groups under central command to avoid chaos. Two main armed groups, the Free Syrian Army and the Higher Revolutionary Council, have agreed to join. Straight with sports. Following the Gambia shocking to win defeat to Algeria at the Independence Stadium on Wednesday, the Minister of Youth and Sports has said that it is time to better restructure Gambian football. The minister who watched as the Gambia tasted defeat on home soil for the first time in five years maintains that the fight will continue. Here is an excerpt. We call for Maria to win. And now that he went, wanted to win by many goals, not even by one. So losing is very bad. Nobody likes that. We feel very bad. But watching we'll watching this is the first time that Gambia defeated, uh, we are defeated at home since that uh, tunnel defeat to, to Guinea Conakry. I mean, the, 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 the fighting spirit that they have shown in previous games at home here today have been lacking. We have not seen it, I agree. We have not seen the fighting, fighting spirit. And that's why, yes, as much as we go on to give this, this support to these boys to try qualify us to 2013 and 2014, we will, not, we will not lose sight of the fact that we need to work on growing our home base players. We want to work on that. With the coach, with the technical team of the FA, to also focus on bringing up home locally grown players. Honorable, where do we go from here in Gambian football? Gambian football will not die, I can assure you that. You know, it's number one football sport in this country. Um, we will try to qualify. If we don't, as I said, we have uh, very good local uh, base players in this country. We'll continue giving them support. We will work on also upgrading our local league. It's very, very important in our local league. This is where you can have players to fit into the, uh, the senior category. So Gambian football will keep growing. This will not be the end of Gambian football. And before we go, a reminder of our headlines. President Jame has promoted deputy ministers standing by Jaita, Solomon Owings and Francis Littimbroge to the position of minister. Conservationists and environmentalists from across the sub-region have concluded deliberations on means of protecting the West African coast and its marine resources. The Joint Arab League United Nations envoy to Syria and former United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan has called for the immediate cessation of hostilities. And after months of pro and anti-Vladimir Putin process, protest, Russian voters are gearing up to elect new president. But you can also follow that story and other GRTS programs live on our website, which is at www.